Hello. I teach math at a small college, and once in a while I'll ask my classes if anyone knows why the astronauts are weightless up there in space. And um, I'm always amazed that so very few people actually know the answer to this question. Now, I, I do get two real common answers, and I'm going to first start by dispelling those myths, <laughs> they're wrong answers, and then I'll describe to you why, why uh, the astronauts are weightless up there. So, why are they weightless up in space? The first answer I get is because there's no air up there. All right, well, at least these people know that there's no air up, up in space. When you go up around 100 miles or so, the air is virtually gone. The atmosphere is, is virtually gone. And um, that does help them stay in orbit up there because there's uh, almost no friction from air up there. And of course, if you go farther, there's really no friction from our atmosphere. So, uh, but that's not the explanation because um, many, many times we have, uh, through centuries, we have found ways to pump air out of containers like jars or, or boxes or what have you. So um, we can take the air out of something and it does not cause anything to float. And, uh, and plus think about the astronauts walking on the moon. There's no air on the moon, but yet the astronauts did not float off the moon. They were able to walk across it. All right, so um, that's not the explanation. All right, the other common answer I get, this is a little more reasonable. People say, well, they're, they're weightless up there because there's no gravity. And so is it because there's no gravity? Well, uh, Actually, there is gravity up there, <laughs> okay? There's gravity everywhere in the universe you go. Now, um, you know, the farther you get away from big objects like planets and stars, um, you know, the, the less you're going to feel the effects of gravitational pull. But everything in the universe influences everything else through gravity. Um, and, and how does this work? Well, Sir Isaac Newton was the one who um, discovered the principle that the gravitational pull between two objects varies inversely to the square of the distance between them. So I'm going to explain what that means, and hopefully a little plainer English. The, um, let's think about the Earth. Now, use a nice round number. The Earth is approximately 4,000 miles in radius. Okay, so, and the center of the Earth is the center of gravity. Everything on the surface of the Earth is being pulled toward the center of gravity. All right, now, if you were able to build a tower that was 4,000 miles high, and then if you were able to climb it, okay, imagine a 4,000 mile high tower. If you stood up here, how much would you weigh? Well, the, you would now be twice as far from the center of the Earth as you are here on, on land. So you'd be twice as far varies inversely to the square of the distance means that if I take twice as far, take two and square it, two times two is four, inversely means the reciprocal, one-fourth. You would weigh one-fourth as much up there. In other words, the gravitational pull from the Earth, twice as far from the center of the Earth, is one-fourth as much. So, if you weigh 200 pounds here, up there you would weigh 50 pounds. There's still gravity, and, and quite, a, quite a bit of it. Now, uh, actually, the astronauts orbit much closer to the Earth, and they're somewhere around 100 to, to 400 miles up. And I think it varies depending on the mission. And um, if you were 200 miles above the Earth, and if you built a tower 200 miles high and were able to climb it, how much would you weigh then? Well, I, I did the math. You would weigh um, about around 9 or 10 percent less. And so if you were a 200 pound person here at the surface of Earth, by climbing up 200 miles, you would weigh around 180, maybe 181 pounds. You would still weigh quite a bit. All right, so you're not going to lose much weight going up to where the astronauts are. So there's definitely gravity up there. <laughs> okay, we can dispense with, with this answer also. That's not the reason. All right, now, now what are the astronauts doing up there? They're in orbit, and when you're in orbit around an object, you're going in a circular type of motion. Now, so, and I'm going to keep it simple 
and just assume that this orbit is a circle. Technically, most orbits are oval or elliptical, elliptical shaped. But um, you can orbit in a circular motion like this. That keeps the explanation just a little bit simpler, I think. All right, so how do uh, we get those rockets in orbit? Well, they, uh, they don't just have to climb, we'll say 200 miles. I'll use 200 miles as a reference. You don't have to get a rocket to climb 200 miles. You also have to get it to go 200 miles up this way, but you got to get it going 18,000 miles an hour that way. And uh, so up there in orbit, these astronauts are going approximately 18,000 miles per hour. Now, the way I drew this arrow, if the Earth was not there, suddenly the Earth just vanished, then they would pretty much move in a straight line for all practical purposes. Now, there would be gravitational influence from other places in the solar system and the universe, but pretty much if the Earth just suddenly vanished, they would just take off in a straight line. Another one of Newton's laws, I believe. Um, but that's not the actual path they're taking, is it? Their actual path is circular. Why is that? Well, it's because there is gravity up there. The, the Earth is pulling the astronauts back toward the center of the Earth. And so this pool, pool of gravity, uh, bends the path. Bends the path so it ends up in a circle. So gravitational pull is bending this path in order to create this circular orbit. All right, we still haven't got the reason why they're weightless. Okay, but what is the essence of weight? I'm standing on this floor. How come I feel weight? Well, the Earth is pulling me down, so I'm feeling a pull downward, but the floor is pushing back. And so I feel a sensation of weight because I feel this force downward and the floor is pushing back at me. It's resisting. And now, now if the floor just suddenly disappeared, I would, I would drop, wouldn't I? I would fall and suddenly um, I would have a sensation of weightlessness. <laughs> okay, that's what's happening up there. They're falling toward the earth. You know, the engines are off. They're going 18,000 miles an hour. The, the, the engines are shut off and they're falling back toward the earth. Now, if they didn't go fast enough, what would happen? If they didn't go fast enough, then they would fall toward the earth and eventually land somewhere out here. They would spiral down to the earth. If they went too fast, if they went too fast, then it turns out that they would, uh, they would go out this direction. See, my pen's running out of me. Um, but when you go at the right speed, everything's balanced out so that they maintain this circular orbit. All right, so they're falling. There's nothing pushing back. Without anything pushing back, there's no, there's no weight, because weight is gravitation pulling something down and something resisting, resisting that push. So nothing pulling, pushing back. That's how come they can float around in the cabin. So anyway, that's, that's the essence of weightlessness and, and why they're, they're weightless up there in space.